This is Dr. Jack Jackson. This is part three of our series of lectures on descriptive statistics. This lecture is on measures of relative standing. Measures of relative standing means basically we want to take a measurement and compare it to uh, all the other measurements in the uh, data set. So they tell how a particular data value compares to the positions of other data values. For example, what proportion of the data values are below it. So sometimes this is called measures of position instead of relative standing. So here are some examples of relative standing that we'll be talking about. First is extreme values and the minimum and the maximum. Then we'll talk about the median, quartiles, box plot, deciles, percentiles, and then z-scores are also a measure of relative standing that we won't talk about uh, until part five after we introduce variability and the standard deviation. So the first part of this, except for z-scores, will be in this lecture. Well, the first two are probably the easiest. The minimum is the lowest occurring data value, and the maximum is the highest occurring data value. So it's the one with whose value is the highest is the maximum. So you think about it, these two values sort of book in the data. So all the data are at or between these two values. The next one we want to look at is the median. And the median is sort of the middle in a certain sense. That is, what you want to do is take your list of data, put it in order from the smallest to the largest, and then you find the value right in the middle so that half of the data is below it. Of course, then the other half will be above it. So we want half of the data to be below uh, or at the median. And if you think about it, then these three values, the minimum, then the median, then the maximum, or could also be called half tiles, and they bracket the data into two portions, each containing half of the data. Half will go from the minimum to the median, and then half from the median on up to the maximum. These two intervals may be very different lengths, but they contain the same number of data values. If it's a median of a sample, we denote it by x tilde, and you can see that uh, shape right here, and then capital M for the median of a of a uh, population. How do we compute the median? Well, as I said before, the first thing you want to do is rank the data in an ordered list from the smallest to largest. Now it's actually a little bit different whether if n is an even number or n is an odd number. Remember n is the number of, of items in your sample. So if n is an odd number, once you put it in order, there will be a single number in the middle that is the same distance from the top, the maximum, as it is from the bottom, the minimum that value will be the median. Notice if n is the number of items in the sample, if you take n plus 1 and then divide by 2, that will give you the position number for the median. So for example, if you had 5 data points, 5 plus 1 is 6, divide by 2 is 3. So if you take the third value from the top, it's also the third value from the bottom, and that will be the median. Now if n is even, then you're going to have a tie for the two values that are in the in the middle of this ordered list. Okay? There'll be you can still figure out n plus one over two, but that'll be a half of a position. Like if you have six data values, six plus one is seven divided by two is three point five. So there is no data value at three point five. So what you do is you take the one at three and the one at four, which are equally uh, three is the third one from the bottom, four is the third one from the top. They're equally in the middle, so you just average those two, that is, add them up, and then divide by two. That'll give you a value halfway between those two in the middle. And so still, half the value is, half the data is above and half is below. Notice in the odd case, we're not counting the, the one that's at the median itself, but as being part of either half. But what's left will be equal to equal halves. In the case of the even case, we have a value that's not necessarily part of the data set, but then you have half the data above and half below. Let's look at an example here. So in the first example, we have five data values. Notice we've put them in order already. One, five, seven, 12, and 20. Seven is the one in the middle. Notice that uh, n is five, so n plus one over two is three. So it's the third data value from the bottom. It's also the third one from the top. And that's the median, is that data value seven. So notice there's two above it and two below it. 
half the data is above, half the data is below, not counting the median itself. In the second example, we'll look at one where n is even. This, this one has six database. So again, I put it in order, 1, 5, 7, 12, 20, and 30. Notice there's a tie for the middle, 7 and 12 are both the same distance from the top and bottom. 7 is 3 from the bottom, and 12 is 3 from the top. Or 12 is 4 from the bottom, 7 is 4 from the top. There's a tie there. So, what we want is something between 7 and 12, and we always take exactly halfway between the two. So we just average those um, those values. Notice if you did uh, this formula n plus 1 over 2, you would take 6 plus 1 over 2 is 7 halves or 3.5. So this is telling you that that you want the one at the 3.5 position. Well, it's not really one at the three, the third and a half position. So you want to take the one at the third position and the fourth position and just average the, those two. And so, of course, uh, 7 plus 12 divided by 2 is uh, 19 halves, which is 9.5. And so 9.5 is the median. Notice then you have three values below the 9.5, three above. Half the value is below the mean, median, and half is above. Now here is the data that we had uh, earlier from the uh, inauguration age of the U.S. presidents. Remember, this was dot plot that we had from the presidents uh, of the United States, their ages at their first time they were inaugurated. And so we can see that there are actually uh, n equals 43, so there are actually 43 different presidents. Um, sometimes you'll hear uh, our current president, Barack Obama, is listed as the 44th president, but that's because Grover Cleveland uh, served two terms with somebody serving a term in between. Uh, but, but I'm counting Cleveland as well as all the others who have served two terms or more as uh, one data value here in this there first time that they were inaugurated, uh, if they were inaugurated more than once, the first time that their age at that point is what is in this dot plot. So there's 43 different ones. And so that means if you take uh, 43 plus 1 divided by 2, that's 22. So if you count 22 from the bottom, okay, so you can follow my cursor here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, there's number 22 right there, the 22nd value. It's also the 22nd one from the top, count down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Okay? And so we have the 22nd one from the top. Now, that makes it the median. Now, so that means it's the middle in the sense that half of the data is below it and half is above it. 21 values below and 21 above. So the lower half of the data is, is between the minimum and the median and between the min median and the maximum is uh, another half of the data. Notice the median in this case is a little bit closer to the lower end than it is to the upper end. So, these three numbers, minimum, median, maximum, book in the data into three, uh, these three numbers book in it into two halves. Now, the next thing we can do is do a similar thing called quartiles. Just as it takes the two extreme values to book in the data into one group, the three half tiles, minimum, median, and maximum, to divide the data into two halves, it takes five quartiles to divide the data into fourths. So Q sub K is the value so that K fourths of the data is at or below it. So Q zero is just another name for the minimum. There is zero fourths or no data below the minimum. Q4 is another name for the maximum. There's four-fourths of the data, or 100%, all the data, is at or below the maximum, Q4. The median would be Q2, 
two-fourths or one-half the data is at or below Q2, the median. And then we have these two new values, Q1 and Q3. Q1, sometimes called Q sub L, the lower quartile or first quartile, is so that one-fourth of the data is below Q1. Q3 is a value so that three-fourths of the data is at or below Q3, sometimes called the upper quartile or Q sub U. I will typically, instead of calling these Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, I will usually use the words minimum, Q1, median, Q3, and maximum. So these four values, minimum, five, five values, minimum, Q1, median, Q3, and maximum, divide the data into fourths. Now, everybody computes the minimum, the median, and the maximum in exactly the same way. But, unfortunately, there are multiple interpretations on the, the details of how we compute the first and third quartiles. In fact, if you use different technologies like, oh, let's say SPSS, Excel, and the TI-84, they all use slightly different formulas to compute the upper and lower quartiles. Now, rather than getting into the details of how they, each one does that, I'm not really that um, wanting to get all that hung up about this. What we're going to do is just use the TI-84 method because that's probably what we will use on an exam. <clears throat> and here's how it does that. The Q1 is going to be the median of the lower half of the data. And we do not count the median in the lower half. So if there's an odd number of data values, the median, um, like if there's you know, 43 data points, that median does not count as being one of the halves. Then there's 21 below, 21 above. You just take that lower 21 as the lower half, compute the median of that. Similarly, keep the, compute the median of the upper half for Q3. Now, uh, like I said, the only reason I mention this about these doing different ways is if you do get a data set um, with the right number of data points and data values, you could get slightly different numbers for, from all three of these different uh, softwares, SPSS, Excel, and, and the T84, but they uh, all have basically the same interpretation. That is, one-fourth of the data is at or below Q1, and three-fourths below Q3. So, uh, using that method, here is the uh, dot plot of the inauguration age. Uh, we can see, uh, again, this is the median here, maximum, and the minimum. And now we can find this uh, Q1, and uh, this should say Q3, that's a typo. So Q1 should be from the bottom. If we, if we don't count the median, there's 21 values below it. So there should, should be in the 11th position. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That one's correct. And this one should be the 11th uh, also from the top. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that's the median of the top half. That's the median of the bottom half. And so now we have that in fourth. One fourth of the data here is from the minimum to Q1. One fourth from Q1 to the median. One fourth of the median to Q3, I should say. And then one fourth from Q3 to the maximum. A box plot is a visual way of representing what we just saw on the uh, the quartiles. So sometimes called a box and whiskers plot or just a box plot for short. It's a graphical representation. So we start by drawing a horizontal number line and we draw a vertical line at each quartile. Connect the endpoints to the upper and lower quartiles to form the box of the box and whiskers. That box contains the middle half of the data. Connect the midpoints of segments above the minimum and lower quartile to form the lower whisker and similarly form their upper whisker. And if you want, you can do it with a vertical number line and make it go up and down instead. And this is pretty useful when we compare two box plots. So take a look here. So notice that we have our minimum. Again, we still got that typo there. That's supposed to say Q3 right here at 58. And then at 50, we've got the, the Q1. And so this is our box right here that is the middle half of the data. The median is right here, 54, maximum at 69, 42. So here's the lower whisker, the upper whisker, and the box, which is the middle. 
And so now you can see your fourth. So one fourth of the data is in here, one fourth here, one fourth here, and one fourth here. Okay, so for example, we could compare two box plots. So if we look at these two test scores from Mrs. Jones Algebra 1 class on the top in red and Mrs. Adams Algebra 1 class bottom on the blue on the first unit, we can tell some things. So we can see that um, the highest was actually in Mrs. Jones class, but she also had the lowest. Also, Mrs. Jones is more widespread. Not only is the whole thing more widespread, but that middle box is more widespread. You have a quarter of the values in Mrs. Adams class right here in a very small uh, spot right here. Okay, and the median is much higher here, the minimum is much higher, so I'd say in general Mrs. Adams class did a little better and more consistent on this exam. Just like we have quartiles and half tiles, we can talk about uh, deciles. There'll be 11 of them from D0, D1 up to D10 and they'll divide the data into tenths. So dk, d sub k, would be the value so that k tenths of the data is at or below it. So d sub 3 would be a place so that 3 tenths of the data is below that. Similarly, we can also have percentiles. A percentile, uh, there are 101 of them actually, from p0 all the way up to p sub 100, divide the data into hundredths. So there's k hundredths of the data at or below pk. So if someone scoring at the 87th percentile scored above 87% of the other people on the assessment. This does not mean that they got 87% right. They may have gotten more than 87% right or less. Depends on the exam. But it does mean that they scored better than 87% of the people on that same assessment. So you see percentiles a lot in uh, various contexts, particularly for large data sets. If you have a too small of a data set, percentile is not quite as meaningful.